Good day fellow investors. Today we're going to analyze Zim Integrated Shipping, which was a very requested stock for me to analyze over the last two years. And it will give a great overview of the risk and reward of investing in the container shipping industry now. Now, if you look at the chart here, it wasn't such a disaster. Yes, the stock is down significantly, but there have been some significant dividend payments over the last two years, about 4 billion, which is four times the market cap. So the stock price destruction isn't that significant here when you look at it. It isn't as bad as you see it. However, we have to analyze the business from the current position, from the current stock price level. And let's start by discussing the business, the financials, and then the risk and reward related to investing in this company. So the container ship industry, it is like a commodity. So prices for shipping something like this from China to Europe depend on supply and demand. I have recently also added Marsk to my covered stock list on my stock market research platform. Don't worry, it's not a buy. If you want to check my research platform, just a note here, there are four stocks that I think that are a good buy now. So if you are looking for value investments, you might check my research platform. And perhaps even Marsk or Zim will become a buy as we follow the cycle in the shipping industry. If we look at Zim, they are in transition, they are renewing their complete fleet, getting a lot of new ships, going to LNG powered to go to cost savings when it comes to advantages in relation to the market. But they are really going to still get a lot of new ships coming in 2023 and 2024. I think something also 2025. For now, we have 13 ships delivered. There are still uh, then 33 ships to be delivered. They are rechartering also a lot of ships that were on charter in the prior years. And a lot of those will have to be renewal in 2024. Renewing in 2024 means that still the old great contracts from 2021, 2022 are in place. So they are still making money on those. Renewing in this environment won't be as profitable as it was. That's the situation in the market. And this is perhaps the most important chart to look at when you look at Zim integrated shipping or other shipping companies, especially container companies. If you look at, and maybe my editor can increase just this part, if you look at this, the supply and demand balance, the global throughput growth expected, which are always positive estimations, is for 1.4% and 2.2% growth in the next two years. However, given the great situation in shipping, everybody bought new boats, including Zim. And therefore, the tonnage supply to ship your things across the oceans is going to increase 8.4% and 9.1%. These are contracted ships, which means that there will be an oversupply of shipping possibilities, which means that shipping prices will go down, down and down. And therefore, if those prices go down, the shipping costs are relatively fixed, then we will see a disaster in the industry. And given the great times that have been around for the last one, two years, it's still a shock to the industry that after a squeeze comes a glut because everyone can order those ships in uh, China. If we collect 20 million, we can buy a small container ship and then charter it out. So there have been a lot of investments, a lot of cash in the industry. And when the industry has a lot of cash, they usually invest it. And that's actually a negative factor because then there is oversupply and prices go down. So for now, everyone is still high on the high money that they made in the past. So just 1% of capacity is idled. Compare the scrapping, 450,000 tons each year, 2024, 2025, 
compared to deliveries of 3 million and 1.9 million. Also, no scrapping this year versus deliveries of 1.6 million. So, there is still so much exuberance in the system and nobody wants to be the first one to blink and therefore prices will be low. Low shipping prices mean only one thing. A very bad situation for ship owners regarding their cash flows. And if we look at the results from Zim Integrated Shipping, those results reflect industry downturns, EBITDA is down 89% from the last results. They are going to lose money over the, the current period and also over the next years if things don't improve. Cash flows are still there, but Keep in mind, there are a lot of old contracts still that are not yet renewed at lower prices. The equity is there, 2.6 billion. And if you just look at the things going forward, for now they are still okay managing things. But the key here that I have found is that their debt service costs that include debt and lease obligations are now already so high, especially plus the new boats coming in, that they are not cash flow positive going forward. So if Q3 is a reflection of the next four or five quarters, they will be losing even more than 100 million per quarter. So 200, 300, multiply that by four, and then go there goes your equity on the cash flows. If we look at the last nine months, yes, they even paid the dividend with the free cash flow, but the debt service, 1.5 billion is there, and it is something significant. So the cash that they have might be erased pretty quickly. And they already guide for loss this year, which means that 2024 will be even worse. If we look at the cash flows, you must adjust for the impairment there. Okay, that is a non-cash charge. There was, I think, 2 billion or something. But if we look at the cash flows over the last three months, we can see that the cash flows take a lot of those repayments of lease liabilities and borrowings that are not repayments, just payments of the liability that is already there. When you buy a ship, where you lease a ship, there is this contract. And that is the biggest burden there. If you adjust for the impairment of assets, you see that there is no gross profit plus the other costs, the results are negative and likely to be so until the market doesn't turn. And when will the market turn? Nobody knows. We'll discuss that in a moment. But if you look at the assets, they have approximately 3 billion in cash, which means that they can survive, let's say, definitely a year until there is trouble ahead. A year, maybe a little bit longer. 2.5 billion in equity if they lose a billion a billion and something a year it can quickly look ugly now the liabilities are there plus the new boats that will come and even increase that so when you look at zim they know that they are now losing money in this environment and will be bleeding as long as this environment lasts. So Zim investing in Zim now, the risk and reward there is that it is an option on the shipping container industry. If it improves in the next 12 months, the stock will boom and everybody will make money. If it doesn't improve, let me give you a secret about shipping. Zim paid, what was it, 4 billion in dividends, all right? To shareholders, everybody happy. But the fact is that shipping works in this way. When you make money, you pay out your dividend, you set your money aside for when there is a downturn, you simply let the company go bankrupt. And what happens when a company goes bankrupt? The leasing companies sell those ships at new market prices. And then you as a ship owner buy back those ships with the dividends you have gotten in the past. The problem is that you as a retail shareholder cannot play that game because you are not there on these fire sales, on these liquidations. It's for the big boys there. And that is how shipping works. The ship owners make the money, 
the retail investors often get screwed. That's how the cycle works. So as I don't have the capacity to do as Zim owners do, to buy back my own ships at the fifth of the price in a liquidation, it's not an option that I'm willing to take in shipping. So yes, they made money from their IPO, great times in shipping, everybody happy. But now the risk and reward is still attractive for the big owners that can buy back those ships at a quarter on the dollar that those new ships cost in a downturn. Now, I have looked a little bit at what the management is saying and the market weakness has extended longer than we had originally anticipated. I have read also Myers' transcript and they are anticipating ugly for two or more years. If I look at Zim, they are anticipating ugly for at least 12 months. And then they say the market should recover in 2025. We believe 2025 will mark a turning point for Zim and return to profitability. And they have the cash to survive to 2025. If that doesn't happen, then we have a very ugly liquidation scenario and that's something where you as a retail investor lose everything, the big owners buy back their ships and wait for an improvement in the market. And you can see here the freight rate is down 66% year of the year and they are not making any money, especially when you include lease costs and debt costs on shipping now. There was a non-cash impairment, but Okay, and there are no expectations for meaningful recovery into 2024. So the current situation in the shipping industry is that it is ugly. And they have 46 new build vessels committed to, 13 have been delivered, which means that it can look even uglier there. So the story here is to simply think it is as I think non-investable now for retail investors. That's why I have picked Maersk to follow the situation. There has been a big difference in the tone set by Maersk, which is a different company, which is built to survive the longest in case of ugly situations. And these a little bit smaller, let's say more gambling shipping, recent IPO, then we go bankrupt, then we repurchase the ships, then we go public again, let's say smaller players. So see whether you want to bet, it doesn't look like there will be a improved situation until there is really, really pain that the ships are scrapped, etc., etc., to get to a balance in the market. So that's normal for a cyclical industry, a lot of money, oversupply, then we have a glut and prices go down, then we have a carnage where only the strongest survive, and then in the next five, seven years, there is again a boom that happens on underinvestment because nobody is going to order a new ship now. I will follow this and maybe there will be once in a decade a great opportunity to buy a shipping company, a container shipping company, and that's what I will do. You can follow that on my research platform. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.